So now we want to ask a different question. Now we wanted to go back and look at the, at the dependence on the drain voltage. And we said that <clears throat> if I were to look at the basic equation started from here, and I get to this region which is saturation, which would in this case is about 100 millivolts or 4 UT, I see a case where the drain voltage has no dependence on the current. And we talk about this as being an ideal current source. So that makes a lot of sense. So the question now is, well, let's look at some actual data, and let's take a look at some data, some nice long devices, fairly traditional looking devices. And one of the things you're going to see is, um, it does, if I look at these curves here, they look relatively flat, but I do notice that there's a little bit of, little bit of dependence. And over here, I realize there's a little bit of dependence. And what I'm seeing then, you know, I'm starting to ask, well, why is it in flat? And this is an, actually a very interesting question to kind of dig into. But what we find is this actually has to do with the fact that the difference between the effective length and the actual drawn length of the device, and actually the electrostatics that are actually affecting you as that are creating it in the first place. Now, this effect was originally first found by first found by a guy by the name of Jim Early, so it's often called the Early effect. Don't assume that this came before something else, or this comes before something else. And some, every so often you'll hear people say something like that. It's really rather entertaining. That's not what you're shooting for here. What you're looking for here is it's an effect that you know happens just in terms of the electrostatics. But it first was figured out in BJT devices soon after the BJT devices were, were invented. And, and the approach is basically to assume I've got a current at saturation, which would be, say, like right around here. And maybe I could just assume some linear dependence all the way through. And that's a reasonably good starting point. Now, the problem would be is that that's only sort of an approximation. You can already look at the data where that's an issue. In fact, if I were to take this data graph right here um, and zoom into it, I actually do see a lot more curvature. Um, so that's only a bit of an approximation, even at best. So this is just meant to be a, a theoretical way to approach the problem. When I look at this, the one thing that came that Jim Early created, though, was to say, well, if I have this 1 plus, say, drain voltage over early voltage, and sometimes people will talk about early voltage as 1 over lambda, okay, which is a channel leg modulation parameter, that I can take the, the sort of extrapolated slope of all of these devices as a result of this model, and they'll all kind of go b extrapolate back to some negative voltage. Now, this doesn't physically exist. But it's a way that people talk about what this what this equation physically means. So that works. But again, there sort of is some issues here as you look into this closely of exactly how, you know, this dependence actually has some more nonlinear terms in it if you're careful. But if I am careful about where I take a curve fit at each of these points and look at the line, I do see an interesting effect that it is rough, looks roughly linear to the best you can do the curve fit, Oh, well, my average early voltages versus channel length and goes almost down towards zero with a little bit of an offset on it. And this is kind of useful because what we'll find is that the longer we make the device, proportionally we can actually make the early voltage bigger as a result. Now, what we will typically talk about this is actually getting a little deeper to the roots of this is talking about early voltage related to sigma. And sigma is actually a parameter that's often called a drain-induced barrier-lowering parameter, or basically how much does the drain affect the threshold voltage or the channel potential at the source of channel potential on the source of channel side. And that's actually, it turns out to be more fundamental parameter and something you can drive more carefully. And turns out to be very valuable for a lot of the subthreshold concepts, as well as the above-threshold derivations. So typically you're going to see us talk about actually a sort of modified form of this, of being saturated current, e to the sigma vd over ut, and this actually puts everything in the exponential. You've seen one or two equations like this, this is kind of where it'll come from, and there's more detail we can get into as a result of this concept, and certainly can get quite a bit further in to show exactly what the, what the dependence is.